Hello, welcome to Olio, my show. My name is Susan Rushton, and as always, I would need to explain what Olio means before we go any further. One definition is that Olio is short for olla podrida, which is Spanish for rotten bowl, which I just always get such a kick out of. It's a Spanish Portuguese dish with essentially everything in the world in it pork in all its iterations, pig's feet, sausage, bacon, pulled pork, undoubtedly. Uh, with chicken and chickpeas and cabbage and carrots and beans and and uh, olives and and uh, garlic and onions, essentially everything in the world except peach yogurt and green M and M's. That's one definition. Another definition is that oleo is what comes in between acts of a melodrama. So you might have somebody juggling, you might have somebody doing a song, you might have somebody singing sing um, or doing a skit and none of it has anything to do with anything else and none of it certainly has anything to do with the melodrama so in other words apples oranges and, and monkey wrenches so welcome to my monkey wrench today my guests are two people whom I highly respect who whom you if you've been around Auburn you know you know these people and you probably know what we're going to talk about this is Kevin Hanley. I'm sorry. I should have. I should have <laughs> introduced Dan, <laughs> the Honorable Daniel Berlant, who is you're also on the uh, City Council, correct? That's yes. correct. Welcome. Thank you. Now I can thank uh, Kevin Hanley for being my guest. He too is honorable. <laughs> Former honorable. Former honorable. <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, but I respect. I highly respect you both. These gentlemen are. Uh, in, in addition to everything else they, they've got their hands in, in the Auburn area, they are uh, council members of the Greater Auburn Area Fire Safe Council. Daniel Birdland is chair, and if you want to learn more, you need to search for the Greater Auburn Area Fire Safe Council or go to auburn.ca.gov and click on government, then find it on the list under boards and commissions. So it's, it's clearly dealing with fires and fire prevention, and it has been in the, it has been an, a board, a council, since 2001. Correct. And I learned about it from Bob Snyder earlier in the year, and, and I learned more about it at, when I went to the fire prevention panel and movie at the State Theater in I th October, was it? Um, so, and I had, I'm embarrassed that I had no idea that it, it had been around for 17 years. Um, and so since, and I, I know I'm not unique, so if I haven't known about it, there are other people who haven't known about it, and you should, people should know about it. What is it? Why, why did you start? Well, in uh, early 2000, several residents in the Auburn area became concerned about the fire threat to Auburn. So uh, we got because together. Because we're on the edge of, of a canyon. On the American River Canyon, yeah. uh, big threat. And uh, so what we did is we formed the Greater Auburn Fire Safe Council. And it, the area that we cover is all the way from Loomis to North Auburn. It's a really big area. And we were the first fire safe council in Placer County. And since then, we have a number in Lincoln and Placer Hills and Forest Hills. So we kind of led the way. And we have, we did agreements with the city of Auburn and with uh, Placer County. So we have four appointments uh, from the city council. And we have four appointments from the Placer County Board of Supervisors. Okay. Uh, District 3 and District 5, which is basically kind of Auburn uh, East. So uh -huh. we're an eight-member volunteer uh, fire safe council working on educating the public about the fire danger, what we can do as individual homeowners, what we can do as neighborhoods, uh, working with our fire agencies to get grants to help them do their job. And we're a good sounding board for citizen opinion about what we need to do on fire okay. danger. And we've accomplished a lot uh, over the years. Wow. Okay. But when, when you say you're a con you've 
when Kevin says you guys have, have accomplished a lot, what have you accomplished? You know, I would say that the, probably the shining star for uh, this Fire Safe Council is the shaded fuel break. And, and Kevin and, and many others early on saw the need to do something to really separate the city of Auburn and the American River Canyon uh, and the threat that the American River Canyon can pose for, for fire risk. And the, the um, Fire Safe Council has really uh, been a grassroots effort to get residents uh, throughout uh, the uh, the canyon rim involved in, in doing work on their own, making sure that their properties are cleared, but also coming together as a community uh, to uh, to make that that fuel break uh, strong. And so, uh, Kevin, many others uh, dedicate years and years and years to really get that fuel break uh, in into the shape it's in. And, and I think, um, and Kevin, you may agree. I think the probably the biggest thing for this year is the fact that the Fire Safe Council won a nearly two million dollar grant from Cal Fire. Ah. Um, to help with the maintenance and, sh and strengthening it. So that's probably the biggest influx of money to help um, this shaded fuel break and to protect Auburn. And that really is, is what the, the Fire Safe Council is all about, is, is grassroots efforts, getting residents together to help us prepare for what is the inevitable uh, in our canyon. And is it inevitable? Uh, well, absolutely. You know, it's not a, uh, it's really not uh, if, it's when. And we've had fires in, in the canyon already. We've had close calls in Auburn. We've had destructive fires in North Auburn yeah. that have destroyed over 60 homes and buildings. So absolutely, it's inevitable. Okay. Um, it's just a matter of where are we going to stop the fire? Is it in the canyon? Uh, is it over the river? Is it at the rim uh, of the canyon? Or is it within our city? Obviously, uh, the city council uh, just took action to increase the number of firefighters so that we can fight those type of fires. Okay. Um, but I think that it is inevitable, and that's why we as residents, we as a fire safe council, and we as a city have to be prepared and, and protected. Okay. I, yeah, I agree with you. Um, you mentioned this term. You both mentioned this term, sh shaded fuel break. What is a shaded fuel break? Uh, well, first of all, the situation we face in Auburn is... The American River Canyon area is owned by the federal government, uh -huh. the Federal Bureau of Reclamation. And so the turning point was in 2009 when we had the 49 fire in North Auburn, burned down 63 homes. That got a lot of attention. And um, so we work with the Bureau of Reclamation, the city of Auburn, with the federal government to allow uh, citizens, the Auburn Fire Department, to go work on the canyon area and uh, the city of Auburn with the federal government developed the shaded fuel break which uh, goes from South Auburn all the way to the Forest Hill Bridge is 300 feet wide and it's not a clear cut. What it is it looks like a park and basically it is eliminating a lot of the fuel on the ground limbing up uh, the trees in the American River Canyon on that uh, 300 foot wide uh, shaded fuel break to reduce the canopy so that uh, the air tankers coming over when they drop retardant, it doesn't get hung up in the trees. Okay. So it hits the ground. So what we want to do, the strategy is when the inevitable fire, as Daniel mentioned, happens, we want to make sure that the fire is not going from treetop to treetop, that it's brought to the ground level and then the City of Auburn Fire Department, CAL FIRE, other agencies can put out the fire at that point mm. and stop it from coming into the city, coming into the historic business district. So, yes, fire is inevitable, but if we can stop it and mitigate it, we, the catastrophic fire is not inevitable. Okay. So that is part of the goal and, and our Fire Safe Council working with the various fire agencies and other organizations is to try to maintain that shaded fuel break as one strategy in addition to encouraging homeowners to also work around their home, reduce the fuel load, clean the gutters, do all those kinds of things. Uh, so when homeowners go on the defense in their home, the firefighters can go on the offense this and is not save their if, homes. It's when the firefighters, when the when the um, homeowners go on the defense, right. okay. I would like to, to, to you to pinpoint a specific spot where where I can I can look at the shaded fuel break. Where would where would I go? That's that's easy to find. There's a really good uh, location that's easy to access right off Maidu Drive. 
if you go down Mitre Drive behind uh, the Auburn Recreation District's uh -huh. uh, headquarters office, um, right along that stretch, um, right off the roadway, you can see the shaded fuel break. Again, most of it is in the forested area behind uh, homes. Well, but what I'm looking at is something that's thinned. Correct. Right? You're, you're still seeing not, trees. Not desolate. No, you're thinned. still seeing plenty of trees, but those trees are limbed up. The brush, the grass underneath has been removed. And so, like Kevin mentioned, it looks like a park. And so many people may think that right off, you know, behind uh, the ARD headquarters there is a park. But in reality, that's a, a section of the shaded field break. Okay. So I can imagine that people... That homeowners hearing that we're supposed to prevent fire a, a fire from from destroying our homes we have to cut down all the trees what do you mean well I don't want to cut down all my trees what's your response to them I know what it is but tell me what it is. well they don't have to uh, basically reducing the fuel load at their own home uh, working with neighbors in their neighborhood, we promote as a fire safe council what's called Firewise Communities. And that's where the neighborhood gets together and helps each other to reduce the fuel load all through that neighborhood. And in my neighborhood, we threw a potluck. We invited the fire chief to come talk to all of us about how we can uh, strengthen our defense against fire. So uh, Cal Fire and uh, City of Auburn have good pamphlets on what defensive uh, space, uh, how it works. There's a homeowner's checklist. You can walk around on a Saturday afternoon and, and either do be your proud own inspection. Or be, oh my God, look at all the And it gives you a good guidance on what to do. Uh -huh. And, and daniel has uh, been a public official with Cal Fire and been preaching the message on how to do this over the years. So you don't have to clear cut things, but if you can reduce a lot of the fuel load, it makes a big Difference. And if I can take it one step further, you know, one of the problems that we're having with all these fires across California is the fact that we've worked so hard for decades to protect every single tree. Mm -hmm. And so our forests are overstocked. There are too many trees and they're unhealthy. And so unfortunately, by not removing some of the smaller, weaker trees, um, we've actually created more fuel uh, in the conditions that we're seeing right now. In five years of drought, uh, killed uh, over 129 million trees bark beetle, other pests, other changes in our climate are, are really making our forest unhealthy, which means that these fires are more intense, are larger. Yeah. And so we do have to kind of change our mindset to say that those of us who like living in, you know, Auburn or like living in a more forested area, mm -hmm. we're going to have to learn to adapt. And so whether that's making sure that our homes are built with building materials that are amber resistant or making sure that we have some removal of vegetation, again, to keep the healthier trees alive, you're going to have to remove some trees, some brush, in order to make sure that you still have that park-like setting. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so, and Kevin, you mentioned <clears throat> uh, uh, people who can help, or, or the, the, the organization can help neighbors figure out a, a, a plan. How, does, how do they find, these, find, this, find this organization? Uh, at the Greater Auburn Area Fire Safe Council meetings, uh, the third Friday uh, morning at 9 o'clock at City Hall uh -huh. in Room 10, we meet. And we have uh, Lawana Dowling, and she is a Placer Fire Alliance coordinator. And what she does is if a neighborhood wants to create a FireWise community, FireWise, okay. FireWise uh, she goes out and does an assessment. What is the situation? What are the dangers? Where are they doing a good job? And meets with the neighbors and the neighbors kind of create a small steering committee to figure out what they want to do in the future. Mm -hmm. And they're officially recognized as a Firewise community. Hopefully in the future, uh, that will affect uh, insurance company decisions yeah. Yeah. on whether to provide coverage. We're not there yet totally, but uh, the more that we can reduce that wood fuel, the, I think the greater chance that we can keep our fire insurance. So I uh, just come to our fire safety council meetings. Uh, we do have a Facebook uh, page. It's yeah. the Greater Auburn Area Fire Safe Council. So like us, and because we're posting information about our meetings, what we're doing every month, and giving tips to homeowners and residents on how they can help themselves. So we can get that information out easy. Okay. So say say that I have, um, I've 
or my husband has <laughs> <laughs> done done the, all the weed eating and cut down all the all the spindly trees or the the grim the grim bushes that that tend to clog things. So and say that say that my property looks reasonable, but across the street there's there's a tangle of manzanita and and bushes over there. How do I approach my neighbor without uh, causing a problem with neighborliness? And you know, I think a lot of people are in that same boat where they do the work themselves, but you know, how do you um, not make enemies with your neighbor and yeah. how do you still be friends? And I think, um, you know, these Firewise communities and the potlucks that, that Kevin mentioned are a good way to just meet your neighbors and be able to have an open conversation of, hey, here's what I'm doing. And that may encourage them to do their part. Um, so I think educating is, is the first step. Um, but in the city of Auburn, as well as in many parts of Placer County, there are ordinances um, that require homeowners to, to create that defensible space or to remove those weeds. Um, now, uh, for the unincorporated area that's protected by CAL FIRE, uh, they send fire inspectors around to do defensible space inspections, and they go around making sure that, that people are, are um, following the rules. In the city of Auburn, we've really just, again, re-engaged our new fire chief doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but these our firefighters and the fire departments and the cities have the ability uh, to issue citations. They have the ability to actually put liens on the property. They actually have the ability as well to, to uh, hire a contractor to do the work and then bill the homeowner uh, if they're not going to do it. Um, so there are a number of, of legal enforcement uh, you know, options but I would stress that the most important thing is education, starting with that conversation. So in your example, I always think that it's best to start at the lowest level. So going to your neighbor and saying, hey, is there anything I can do? Or did you know that there's a chipper program to make it easier? Or, you know, get just start that conversation. If you don't feel comfortable, that's where the Fire, uh, uh, fire Safe Council with the FireWise communities can help kind of break down those walls. But you always have the ability to contact your local fire department and let them deal with it. Oh, okay, okay. So, if a person wants to get, what is is this a non? This is a nonprofit organization or not? No, it's it's through the city. No, it's we're kind of a city county committee. Yeah. We're not officially a nonprofit. So you aren't looking for for donations. No, I would say we are looking for donations <laughs> to help with some of the the work that's done. You know, uh, for you know, example, there are um, uh, some of this work removing brush. Um, is very costly, yeah. um, you know, to do uh, to do the entire fuel break, which is roughly 300 acres or so. You know, it's two million dollars. <laughs> so you can see that sometimes clearing vegetation, especially depending on the slope, can be very costly. And yes. So I think that the Fire Safe Council has does take donations, and that's what helps put on events like the one. Um, they, they, you came and saw the educational event. So that was uh, fascinating. I, I think personally that and if, horrifying. If you can make donations, absolutely. Yeah. And we have uh, a project, Canyon Safe Fund, that uh, sits with the Auburn Chamber of Commerce. Huh. And so, especially for people who live on the canyon and they want to uh, work on the shaded fuel break, because some of it's private property and some of it's federally mm -hmm. owned, uh, if they donate a dollar. To the project Canyon Safe uh, tax deductible, they can get a matching dollar to do the fuel load reduction. So we encourage residents to donate, uh, neighborhoods to donate, and that was one of the reasons why we had our potluck in our neighborhood. Uh -huh. Is uh, we raised eight thousand dollars from our neighbors, and so that means we got sixteen thousand dollars worth of fuel reduction work done. So there are a lot Say of... Say that again. Say that right into the camera. Uh, <laughs> if somebody, if an organization, if, if a group, if a neighborhood group gets together... And you want to donate to the Auburn Chamber of Commerce, uh, their foundation. It's called Project Canyon Fund. Uh, and it's a basically dollar for dollar match to do wood uh, fuel clearance on the canyon. So it's a great opportunity and we work with those neighborhoods We've had groups, work parties go out and uh, clear the brush, or work day, have a have a lunch. We've had uh, goats on the canyon <laughs> oh, that do a very efficient job. Uh, so there's all kinds of methods to reduce the fuel load. And this uh, Project Canyon Safe Fund is one mechanism uh, to make it less expensive to do. 
for for this for the government for the for uh for the neighborhoods okay uh they put up some money and, and then we have this fund okay, yes, put up matching okay. funds they can do a work day we recognize sweat equity uh -huh. so when people get out there and work uh we match that too so it's a great opportunity uh to get the work done okay so do you guys do, does the do the do the council members of the Greater Auburn Area Fire Safe Council go out and talk to uh, organizations or, or anybody who, if if a if a uh, if a group wants any group wants to have have a speaker, are you willing to? Yeah, we do. I think I talked to a local Seroptimus uh -huh. a couple weeks ago, and I'm sure Daniel in his capacity as a Fire Safe Council member and a city council member talks to many community groups are always willing to get out there. And so all people need to pitch. do is contact you. Yeah. yeah. And I think we'd like to do that because then we can talk about the programs and the services. Not everybody realizes that we have a chipper program in Plaster County. Not everybody realizes that our firefighters will come out and do defensible space inspections. We understand that. And so I think that as, as uh, members of the Greater Auburn Fire Safe Council, it's our job to kind of connect the, the programs that are out there with community members. And that's, I think, one of the, the uh, you know, the, the reasons that, that we as uh, Fire Safe Council members exist is to create that connection with, between the fire departments and our, our own residents and neighbors. Yeah. Okay. And we've organized a number of town halls, meetings, where we invite the public. And as you attended the Wilder Than Wild movie, mm -hmm. uh, we showed the movie free of charge, but it, we also had a panel with the various fire agencies yeah. Uh, impressive panel and our firewise coordinator also the resource conservation district they do a good job in helping homeowners and landowners so we're trying to get the information out there provided no charge to the public uh, so that people can defend themselves yeah. and that's part of our main function sure now i know about the chipper program but i know that other people may not know about the chipper program please explain it so the Chipper program is run uh, by Plaster County Fire, um, and uh, it's gone through a number of different um, uh, funding sources over the years. Essentially, if you uh, cut down a bunch of brush or limbs um, on your property and you don't have a way to dispose of them, you can haul it out to uh, your front yard and put it at the street level, and the Chipper program will come out, and they will actually chip those branches into mulch for you. And then you can take that mulch and use it in your Just garden. Do anything you want. Um, the chipper program does have a small uh, fee to it now to help keep it running. Um, but again, it's a, it's a very efficient way to get rid of your landscape debris like branches um, and turn it into something usable in your garden. Okay. And I think I saw a, a, a post you made on Facebook that, that, you, that, the, that, your, that this council said wants to make the chipper program free we're trying to lower all the barriers for people to create defensible space and so the chipper program is grant funded a little uncertain we just got three years worth of funding but it's not uh, guaranteed so in order i think the local governments need to talk and discuss can we make the chipper program free I think one way it can work is you make a, a deposit. Uh, if you don't use the chipper program, say you lose your, your deposit. Mm. But trying to lower it to free, I think it's a good goal. Uh, when I was visiting my parents in my hometown, uh, their local fire department sent letters to every resident and said, uh, on November 5th, we're going to come out and chip. Do you want us to come to your neighborhood? Okay. Uh, so there can be some creative ways in which local governments and fire departments can uh, make it really easy for the neighbors to chip and get rid of that material, or at least make it the material less dangerous as far as creating a fire. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of good ideas, and our Fire Safe Council has discussed some of those ideas. Yeah. Okay. Um, the do you do you need other council members? Do you, do, uh, uh, actually, that's not what I want to know. What I want to know is, is this a revolving thing? Have you have the two of you always been on the on the fire safe council? 
I would say that you know uh, we're always looking for more volunteers, yeah. and whether they sit as official uh, appointed members or not. Um, when I joined the Fire Safe Council about five years ago, uh, I think there were uh, three or four um, empty seats, and we worked to get those, um, you know, get people on board, new people on board with some new ideas. Um, right now, uh, for the first time since I've been on, we have uh, eight full members. Um, but again, we're always looking for volunteers, looking for people who, you know, want to represent a new community, a new neighborhood, who want to come in and, um, you know, just because you're not an official member appointed by the city council or by the board of supervisors doesn't mean you don't have a voice and doesn't mean you can't ask questions and doesn't, doesn't mean, mean you can't participate. You don't want them. <laughs> no, we absolutely want them. And I, I think Kevin might agree that at least uh, in the past five years, the this year and really the last uh, you know six to seven months, We've had a significant increase in engagement from residents mm -hmm. who are concerned about the fire risk and who are able to attend the meetings. And so that's what I would encourage is people to come find out, uh, you know, how you can help. Oftentimes the council has uh, booths at the fair or different uh, events. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's a good way for us to, you know, plug people in when they want to help. Maybe they can staff the booth for an hour or two at a, at a local sure. event. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So if you're interested in learning more, or contributing or participating in the uh, Aub Greater Auburn Area Fire Safe Council, they you should go online and look go online and look for the Greater Auburn Area F uh, Fire Safe Co Fire Safe Council. It comes right up on Google or other search engines, um, and they can contact you certainly. All right, D Berlant at auburn.ca.com gov, dberlant at auburn.ca.gov, or Kevin Hanley, kh at jps.net. Um, this organization has been in, in, has, on, has been on the ground since 2001, which is before the, the Butte fire, before Napa, before weed, before the, 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 look, the, um, the, 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 the lake, clear lake, lake, County. lake yeah. County, um, these, these energetic, enthusiastic, worried guys, worried people. And I'm grateful to you. I'm grateful for your energy and happy that you're, that you're involved. Um, and I, and I would like other people to know more about you. I think it's a wonderful organization. So Daniel Berlant, Kevin Hanley, once again, of council members of the Greater Auburn Area Fire Safe Council. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you, Susan. Thanks. Yes. And I'll see you again.